your boat doesn't have to come out of the water looking like this. On Brickhouse, we'll show you how we clean our bottom, and then we'll go to Hank Schmidt from Offshore Passage Opportunities to give his tips from the pros. Number four, how to keep your bottom clean. Hello, I'm Patrick Childress. In over 12 years of living on our sailboat, Brick House, Rebecca and I have never found a bottom paint that does what it's supposed to do, what the advertising says that it will do. We've always ended up having to scrub it much sooner than ever expected. So we normally use a hookah, and up here we'll put a link to video number 12, which shows how we use the hookah for scrubbing the bottom, especially after we've been sitting for several months in one harbor. And the marine growth really does accumulate. And at the end of this video, we'll show you some underwater scenes from that video. But Hank Schmidt from Offshore Passage Opportunities has a very good system for using a scuba tank, which you don't have to strap to your back and be so encumbered under the water. So he's going to show us how to start with scrubbing the water line and then go deeper using the scuba tank and not wear it into the water. Okay, so we're getting set up to go ahead and clean the bottom of the boat. I've been cleaning bottoms for about the past 25, 30 years. And at first we'd set up like most divers with a BC jacket and, and regulator and all the weight belts and everything. But I found it was much easier just to have a tank and a long 25, 30 foot which I'll set up right here in the middle of the boat. And if you have a dinghy, you could also put it in your dinghy. But this uh, keeps you from having to get a BC jacket and a weight belt uh, when it's time to clean your bottom. And you'll see how we can actually clean most of the bottom. And we'll demonstrate that in a little bit just by go ahead and uh, having the uh, tank set up in the middle of the boat. We open it up so it's ready for us. We all the way open and back a little bit. And I'll just leave it right here in the middle. I'll go ahead and get set up. To, uh, in the water and as you'll see I can clean most of the boat without having to use the tank and I just have that ready for me when I need it so I'll go in the water and it's all set to go when I need that for cleaning the prop for the bottom of the keel maybe the bottom of the rudder and we're gonna go ahead and, and get in the water now and we'll show you how you can clean your boat pretty much a boat as big as 40 45 feet without using a tank uh, if you didn't have a tank if you weren't certified uh, but of course having a tank makes it certainly easier for cleaning off your prop bottom of your keel but really, to clean the bottom of your boat, the water isn't that cold, you don't need a wetsuit or anything, you just need a few things. So we're gonna go in with our swim fins, a scraper, of course, for getting any barnacles or anything. If you have barnacles on the bottom of your boat or anything, then you really should just be hauling the boat out and painting it. Uh, a diver is not to keep you from having to paint your boat uh, once a year or once every two years. Uh, for scrubbies, there are actually three different grades of scrubbies. One is like a sponge almost, and that's when you're racing or you keep it clean a lot. Then the red one a little bit more abrasive. And then uh, you might be familiar with the black ones, which are really for cleaning your barbecue grill. And if you have to use a black one, again, I would usually just tell the owner of the boat, save the money uh, that I would charge you for diving and putting it towards a short haul. So you shouldn't have to be taking barnacles off the bottom of your boat. If you have barnacles on the bottom of your boat, you need to paint. But I know our bottom is not that bad, so I'll be able to use the lightest grade scrubby you can. You don't want to use anything more abrasive because then you're taking bottom paint off and again bottom paint as you know is very expensive 250 to 400 dollars a gallon so the idea isn't to put it on and then scrape it all off so again you want to use the the lightest scrubby you can also very important are the suction cups because again imagine you're in the water and as you're cleaning the boat you're pushing yourself away so they sell these at your marine supply stores, uh, also uh, any glazier windows, they also have suction cups for moving big pieces of glass. So you want suction cups, I put a line on there so I don't lose that, and then I'll just have the scrubby on the other side. Uh, I do use gloves, uh, again for barnacles, you don't want to scrape your hands. Uh, if it's really cold water you'd want to use a wetsuit, but uh, it's not too cold today. Uh, so just swim fins, again if you want you can use booties. Uh, my booties are more worn out than my gloves, so I don't use booties anymore. And up here where the water is dirtier, I, I do like to put on a, a hoodie as well uh, with a mask. Just any, any mask. I don't use the snorkel at all because, again, I'm going to be holding my breath, uh, cleaning the bottom of the boat and coming back up. And you'll see that demonstration in a little bit. 
So again, you don't need a lot of, a lot of tooling. Uh, a minute ago you saw we set up a, our, our tank so we don't have to worry about a, a BC, a buoyancy control jacket, uh, or a weight belt even. Uh, we'll have enough with the suction cups to be able to take care of that. So you eliminate a lot of gear, a lot of maintenance without the BC jacket. So just a, a tank uh, along, uh, in the middle of the boat, or you keep it in your dinghy in the middle of the boat. And I'll just need that really for cleaning anything off the prop uh, or the bottom of the keel. So with that, we'll get suited up and see you in the water. Okay, so I'm all suited up with my, my stickums, my suction cups. Uh, hopefully I'll get away with just my sponge type. And I leave my other scrubby and my, uh, my putty knife near me so I can reach it when I'm in the water. So I just go in, make sure you hold your mask, and there we go. Okay, we're in the water. I generally like to start at the bow. You see, just okay. So you can see the contrast where it was already cleaned and where it's not. And basically, it's my suction cups in one hand. And I'm right-handed, so I have the scrubby in the other. And I'm just doing wipe, wipe. I hold my breath as I go down, get to the middle of the bottom of the boat, then work my way up the other side, and I just continue that. And that way, I can do probably 90% of the boat without the having to use the tank, the regulator. So it saves you from using a lot of air. Uh, so when I was commercial diving, I could do eight or 10 bottoms with one tank. Uh, so I wouldn't have to make as many runs to do it. And again, if you're out cruising around, you don't have to go and get your bottle filled as often. They do sell smaller pony bottles, which you could probably do the whole bottom with just a small five or 10 minute pony bottle, because again, you only need it for your keel and for your, uh, your running gear, your, your prop and your shaft, if you have any barnacles there. So it's really just hold my breath, wipe, wipe. Keep working down. Just wait, wait. Don't even have to hold my breath on the top. And then just down. And I just keep going all the way around. Probably once every two months. If you're not racing, if you're racing, you might want to do it before each race. It's very simple. Okay, so I've cleaned 80%, 90% of the bottom. I have my regulator set up, 25 foot connected to the tank on deck. It could be in your dinghy. I just pull the holes down now, because I'm ready to do the bottom of the keel. Then I'll get the putty knife, and I'll go ahead and then clean the, uh, the strut, the prop, uh, and the uh, shaft, and then we're all done. So I only need this for the last part of the, last part of the cleaning the bottom. Thank you, Hank. I hope this video was worthwhile for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and also click on the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, there's a link to the tip jar in the video description if you don't mind helping out in that direction. Now here's some of those scenes from when we were anchored for three months in Sri Lanka.